the location of the main controls and the panel take into account the relative importance of each system, the frequency of operation of this system, switches, handles, etc. by the pilot, the ease in which controls can be reached, and the shape of the controls to ensure that we don't take controls and mistake them for each other. The cockpit itself is divided into four zones. Overhead is the overhead panel. Then we have the glare shield. Then we have the instrument panel. And finally, between the two pilots, we have the pedestal. Let's start overhead. The overhead panel uses a cascade arrangement for all the system controls. Cascade arrangement means this patchwork. If you look, you can see how each system here fits like a block onto each other and are kind of stacked on top of each other. You will have down here the front windscreen, which means this is the front portion of the overhead panel sitting right here. And then as you go up, you are then looking backwards on the overhead panel. All of it will be looking right here. The cascade arrangement allows for easy identification of the systems using the system identification that can be seen here on the side of each system panel. And then the selectors can be found inside on the panel itself. The panel has green layouts for the system showing the schematic of the system and the push buttons serve with a dual purpose of being both a button for operation as well as an indication for fault and status of that particular control. So it's called a push light. Then we have rotary selector knobs and we have toggle switches down here, which is reserved for lights and signs. It mentioned before that the controls and systems were arranged based on their importance and frequency of use. Well, you can see down here that you have first the light panel, exterior lights and internal lights and signs. These are operated continuously by the pilots for every single flight and therefore are easy to reach and easy to find. In the same manner, the shape of the toggle switches here are different from any other switches, ensuring that you can mistake them for other switches. Then as we move up, we have the air conditioning panel, then we have the electrical panel, then we have the fuel panel and then the hydraulic and then the fire. So as we're moving back, systems become more and more automated, less and less likely that we'll be operating anything on them. Therefore, they are more in the background. We also arrange with a cascade arrangement, everything that is connected to an engine vertically on top of each other. So let's say that you have an engine failure on the right side, engine number two. Well, all controls operating systems from that engine are vertically stacked on top of each other here. Fuel pumps on the right side, generator from the right engine, hydraulic pump from the right engine, fire push button for the right engine. All are operated here from the right and the same for the left. The glare shield, which is the part in front of the pilots, also known as the eyebrow of the cockpit, is a short-term tactical control used for the auto flight system by the pilot. Operation is easy because it allows for a heads up for the pilots all the time. You are looking right here, here's the windscreen, so it's not a head down scenario when operating controls and that is the efficiency and safety part of it. This is the glare shield from the A320. And here I have for the 330. Take a close look at the two. Do you see the difference? That's because there is no difference. The idea behind the family concept is that the control panels in each aircraft type are the same. They're placed in the same place. They are the same shape and the same controls. 
Now, of course, on the 340, you will have four engines and therefore you will have more system controls overhead. But the hydraulic panel is the same place. The light switches are the same. The electrical generator panel is the same place. And the FCU is identical. When pilots then transfer from one type to another, specifically line pilots flying cross fleet, mixed fleet, where you might be flying the 330 and the 340, the 320 and the 330, you are then able to fly the aircraft with minimum errors when you're using things on a daily basis. I have also, just for kicks here, included the A380. You can see that there is here a difference, but this is because this is a new generation of aircraft allowing for more automation and allowing for more controls, controls that aren't fitted on the older generation aircraft. However, the controls here for altitude, vertical speed, heading, speed, these are the same, they're placed the same way, they are the same shape, so more than 80% of it is actually identical. And now the instrument panel. The instrument panel in front of the pilots ensures display units that are in full view for both pilots to see. The display units are the PFDs, one for each pilot, the NDs, the navigational displays, one for each pilot, and then two screens in the middle known as the ECAM, Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring. We go into a lot of detail in the indicating and recording session from systems on the ECAM, and I have a specific lesson on ECAM handling, so make sure that you watch those as well. And then we have the pedestal. The pedestal in between the two pilots is used for engine thrust control, configuration changes, navigation, as well as communication. Up in the left and right hand corner here, you have the MCDU, the multi-purpose control and display unit. The MCDU is an interface unit that allows the pilots to put data in to the flight management and guidance system as well as retrieve information out, such as performance, flight plan, etc. It is not just an FMS system in this aircraft. It's a flight management and guidance system. And the multi-purpose control and display unit allows for tuning of navigational aids, identification of navigational aids, GPS information, as well as third-party interactions such as, such as ATSU, etc. The radio management panel found on the left and the right side allows the pilots to tune frequencies for radio communication as well as backup navigational aids. Right below that, also right here, is the audio control panel. The ACP is used by the pilots to identify which frequencies and radios they would like to listen to and transmit on. So audio control is for what you want to listen to and transmit on. But listening to is not just radio control communication to the ground. It also includes intercommunication as well as communication with ground crew on the ground, and cabin crew in the back. We also have controls here for thrust. We have the thrust levers, the speed brake lever, the flaps and slat control lever. All are operated from the pedestal with easy access from both pilots.